Good morning. Everybody, everybody here with us in person. Both of raving to be here. And everyone there on video and Facebook and web streaming and wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're glad you're here. And we'd like you to sing, whether you're in your living room, in your pajamas, or here live in person, in real clothes, please stand. Well, if you're home, you don't have to stand. But if you're here, yes, please stand and sing along with our lovely song leaders, Wade, Kimberly, and Rick. This is a Bruno Mars tune called Just the Way You Is, and Just the Way You Is Not. <laughs> consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings, come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light this candle for the shamanic tradition, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. 
We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, the Christ Consciousness and the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the individualistic, yeah, sorry, we light the candle for the universalistic religion of the Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as pa practitioner Pamela Rock lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And please join me in prayer. This is what I know is true. I know that there is only one life. That life is the life of God, or what I call God. It is everywhere present. It's the first cause of all creation. It is that without beginning and without end, the Alpha and the Omega. It is the infinite creative intelligence that is flowing through all of life. It is the creative process both in the universe and in the individual. It is all-knowing, all-power, everywhere present, this magnificent power that we also call divine mind is right here. It is in, through, around, and for each one of us, always. Wherever you are, it is. It is there in times of peace. It is there in times of crisis. So in this holy moment, what I know and recognize is that what brings us together, whether virtually or in person, is that divinity within, that great love within, that great law that is forever active within. And what I know is Something valuable is happening here today. Something good is happening. I know it's good because God and good are synonymous. And God is everywhere. So what is happening here today is God's expression of itself. And I declare it good and very good. And so grateful for knowing what I know. I'm grateful for the law that always says, yes, my beloved, I'm so grateful for the spirit that continuously, continuously guides, nudges, heals, and loves its entire creation, starting with each one. With my heart just overflowing with gratitude for what I know and for what I feel and for who I am, I simply release this word to the law of mind. It's done. I let it go. And please join me if you're in agreement by saying with me, And so it is. And now Marlene Cutler is going to read our Declaration of Principles and our um, affirmation for the morning. We'll try that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm reading the affirmation. Oh, principles. I'm sorry. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit 
operates upon the law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfectly created intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And please join me in the affirmation. I invoke the power of the Divine Feminine to unleash its fierce, loving givingness in my life now. And so it is. Thank you, Marlene, and thank you, everyone. Please welcome the Jewel Tones Choir. It's okay. In our mind, we hear thunderous applause. Right? We can fill it in with anything we want. So, uh, I'd like to acknowledge we have our guest pianist with us today, Jules Vogel, and our fabulous Yay! band, braving the craziness of the world to be here to make music for you. And thank you to our fabulous choir of volunteers for giving your hearts, your commitment, your time, your talent, your voices, and your humor. <laughs> you gotta have humor through all this, right? Um, this first song we're doing is called Side by Side, and it's the old, uh, oh, we ain't got a bear. So if you want to sing along, please do. We're going to start with a verse that is not too well known, that Mr. Wade, in his very best 1930s style singing, is going to introduce for us. So enjoy <laughs> Side by Side by Side by Side by Side.
fun here. Yes. <laughs> this is a very interesting time to live. I, I think there's a Chinese proverb saying, I, I, a blessing saying, I wish for you that you live in interesting times. Well, we certainly do. We live in very interesting times. And we are the ones to be living in them, intelligently, wisely, lovingly. You know, our Centers for Spiritual Living, most of you know this, but in case you didn't know it, we were formerly the Church of Religious Science, based on Ernest Holmes teaching, the science of mind, the science of mind. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is right now, if we were to, if we are true to our science and studying and practicing the science, what we'll know is that we live fully, that this, um, the, the, time, the part of the interesting time that we're living in right now is the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus um, experience. And what I know is, spiritually, there is no disease. But spiritually, there probably isn't any science either. <laughs> There's just being. There's just being, and that being is perfect peace, perfect love, perfect supply. We live in a universe that is filled with more than enough good for everything that we could ever imagine wanting. And the thing that ever limits that good is fear. So, so we do not make decisions out of fear but rather we go deeper and find a deeper power. And that power is love, and it's based in wisdom. So if we think about the ancient practice of principles, we know that the absolute truth is there's plenty, the store shelves are, the spiritual store shelves are never depleted. They're always full. And the health of life is always po powerfully pouring through each one of us. This week I made a decision that is far reaching and was the hardest decision I've had to make in my ministry. And that decision is to not have services here for the next two Sundays and possibly more. We will help have something for you. In fact, we'll be more online than we've ever been. But we will not be in person. And the reason for that is that I fully believe in the advice that has been given by the CDC and the World Health Organization, that the way to, the way to get a stop on the advance of this coronavirus is to do the wise things. Now, I want to tell you about myself a little bit. I'm a healthy person, and I believe in the science of mind. I have many times said, and my congregation will testify to this, that there's only one thing that ever happens, and that is consciousness is, is, is being evident, is evident. So if consciousness is evident, then, and if consciousness is God's expression of itself, why aren't we all healthy and feeling filled with faith? And the truth is we were created free. So we have the ability to think truth or to think false. And if we think truth, then we know that we're one and all is well. So here's what, here's what I'm going to tell on myself. Two weeks ago, I was not here. Well, week, last week I was not here because the whole week 
I had a mild case of, I think, the flu. It was enough to have me stop my classes and to stay home as much as possible. Now, why I'm telling you that is I don't believe in the flu. <laughs> I do not believe in the flu, and yet I had an experience of something flu-like. So that means a part of me, a subconscious or unconscious part of me, does believe. And I think that that's what we all need to acknowledge. If you've ever, if you've ever had something happen that you did not consciously intend to happen, then you too are susceptible to race beliefs. And that doesn't make you wrong, it makes you human. It makes you human. So during this time, what we want to do is forgive ourselves for any lapses in our own faith and to shore up that faith by doing our spiritual practices and to shore up that, that faith by following the current science, which of course is washing your hands so many times that they're they're completely clear of any kind of virus or germ or anything other than skin that's partially still there. So wash, 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 wash. 20 seconds is a long time. Happy birthday to you twice. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. I was talking with my younger sister, who is a grade one teacher, and she was saying, um, and she's in Calgary, so the Calgary schools are on high alert. They're still open, but they're on alert. This is a global thing that's happening. And she has to go into the washroom with her kids and show them that washing your hands means fingers too. And it means forearms too. It's not just this part of your hand. And it's not just running under the, the <laughs> tap and saying, that's it, I've done it. It's actually using soap with the water and washing. And those of you who have children, no, you had to teach your children how to wash their hands. And not every child has parents that are so wise. So knowing that, knowing that we're here now together, we're here now together doing the best we can with what we have. One of the biggest things we have is our community. One of the biggest and most important things we have is each other. So one of the reasons that I'm suspending things for the next two weeks is to keep us healthy, to keep us whole, to keep us free from the virus or spreading that virus to others. You know, um, it isn't necessarily that you'll get sick because I've un I understand that often there are no symptoms with this coronavirus. And so you could be com completely feeling well and still be spreading the thing. When we get to have testing kits for everyone, then I'd say, go get tested. But while you're feeling well, just be mindful. Do the right things for your body. This body is the temple of the living God. It is the expression of the living God. So what that means is it's so important that you look after your health and well-being. The God within you depends on you to practice hygiene, to keep your social distance, even though it's hard. None of us want to. We want to hold people. We want to touch. Even this morning, um, one, of the, one of the clearest people I know, I reached out and touched her clothed arm, but it's still, I didn't intend to. I intended to keep my space and allow her to keep her space. It's hard to do, but together we can pull through this if we're willing to do the hard things. And why wouldn't we be willing? We're people who have spent years training ourselves to relax, to let go of stuff that isn't true. We've spent years in meditation, learning 
how to listen to that voice for God that is within every one of us. And in that listening, to take right action. To take right action. One of the posts on Facebook last night was one of my colleagues, um, Pat Campbell, who's in Calgary. And Pat was saying she noticed how some centers are closed, some centers are open, and how we tend to make each other wrong for whichever choice we make. <laughs> it ends up being a lose-lose for everybody. Here's the, here's the thing. Listen to your heart. I, yesterday when I made this decision, it, it, so, it made me so sorrowful. Sorrowful that I had to make the decision. Sorrowful that we're in this place, in, in this culture, in this community. As you know, California is a state of emergency. But even if it weren't, what's the right thing to do? And every time I went within, I would get the same message. Because um, I, one of my very favorite colleagues is Jim Lockhart. He's been here, and you all loved him when he was here. He, he's the one that talked about how important it is to be on the leading edge, not the trailing edge, so that we were ahead of the curve, not the curve wasn't pushing us. And sometimes we as science of mind students, religious scientists, centers for spiritual living, sometimes we are at the leading edge, Often we're just in the middle, and that's okay too. We're wherever we are. But he sent out a post, um, was one of his contacts, who's a physician and epidemiologist. And she said in her post how important it was. Her title was, It's Not Another Snow Day. Now, for those of you who are from a cold country like I am, you know that a snow day, like, oh, that's a holiday. We can go play with our friends. We can invite friends over, get sleepovers. She said, no, no, if we want to get a handle on this, this is really a time to be with the nuclear family, your family, and to love the rest of us enough that you trust that we will all be okay. So, she, she said, yes, do the things, wash your hands, exercise. She said, exercise with your kids, play soccer with your kids. Don't send your kids to play soccer with their friends. So the, she's really, really saying, how can we do this so that we're looking after ourselves? Well, okay. then. Let's think about how we can do it and look after ourselves spiritually as well. Because we're first spiritual beings. We are first and foremost spirit in expression. And spirit, of course, is completely free, is able to be everywhere, know all. So this is not the time to let go of your spiritual practice. This is the time for you to deepen your meditation, to do more. If you're already doing an hour, do an hour 15. If you're doing 15, do 20. Whatever it is for you, expand that time where you are open and available to what's going through your mind. Another one of my teachers wrote, um, the purpose of meditation isn't to stop your thoughts, but it is to notice what your thoughts are. So you can stop obsessing on the wrong thoughts. That, that's a really good point. It's to notice what you're noticing. And to notice that still small voice within you that loves you so much and is speaking to you always. So, meditate, pray. We won't have, usually we have practitioners available, but they will not be available in person. However, you can call any one of us. You can call for prayer. You can call, and if you don't know who we are, go to our website and 
check out the list of practitioners. Send a prayer request. You will be prayed for daily by all of us. And there's quite a field of us, I think about 25. Anyway, lots of people praying. Pray, 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 pray without ceasing. So, what did Jesus say? It is done unto you as you believe. It is done unto us as we believe. So even the coronavirus came from a collective consciousness of belief. And none of us sitting in this room likely are fully responsible, but all of us some have some little part to play in it. I won't ask, but I'll ask the online viewers, did you, did you go out and fill up your three or four shopping carts so that you've got more than enough for three months? No. Good. No. But see, people did. So now we need to bring another spiritual practice, compassion to the people who did go into fear who did go into an idea of scarcity and lack, and there's not enough and there won't be enough. I know at least one store, because I saw it uh, on the news, has signs posted all over the store, we're in this together. Oh, nice. We're in this together. And they're really having trouble keeping the, the, even though they have supplies in the warehouse, getting them on the shelves before they're taken off has been, uh, um, a real challenge. So be kind to all the people in service that have to be at their jobs, for the clerks at the stores, for the people in the pharmacies, for all those people, the, for our firefighters and our nurses and doctors, the people that need to be at work, need to be and if they're, if they're at risk, let's collectively know that this thing is a no thing. Aidan Greeney and I have been praying every day for the last two weeks. Uh, we pray on the phone, and we're praying for the health of our center, and the health of each other, and the health of life. And for this last week, we've been praying about the coronavirus, and praying about its, its effects being negligible and being nothing. And Aiden is one of my students, so you know I taught him how to pray. And he's a way more absolutist than I am, which simply means that he believes that there is no such thing as a coronavirus, and that it's a no thing, and it's gone. And, 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 and it's so good that he believes that. And I would follow up with my prayer and say, and I'm willing to open my physical eyes and see what is. So here's another spiritual practice for you. Watch a minimum of news. Watch enough news to keep yourself informed, but not to buy into the panic, the scarcity, the fear. Treat yourself with such loving respect that you're willing to guard the most precious thing you have, which is your mind and your heart. Guard them well. Know that you are loved, because love is. Know that together we will get through this, and together we will practice kindness and no abundance for all. We live in the wealthiest nation of the world. So let that wealth, imagine that wealth is the well-being of everyone. Not just financial wealth, but the well-being of all. Your well-being, my well-being, all of the people that are gathered ever, anywhere, if there are gatherings, and all of the people who are at home, watching, listening, wondering, let this be a moment of decision that you decide to be the guardian at your own mind. 
and let that heart expand with love because there's more than enough for you and the entire world. And so it is. And so it is. I'm now going to pray, and this is sometimes the most important part of our service. This is what I know is true. I know that each one of us is here on purpose, here on this planet at this time. We're here to make a difference. We're here to practice what we know is true to touch that seamless garment of the presence, no matter how we conceive that presence to be. I know that fear is, all, fear is always removed by faith. And faith of God is simply God, is simply love, is simply peace. So in this moment, what I declare for each one is a feeling of peace and well-being a feeling of sufficiency, a feeling of prosperity, an awareness that with God all things are possible, and with God all things are good. So knowing things are good and very good, I simply give great thanks. I'm so very grateful for this presence that operates through perfect law always, that is always always reflecting the sum total of our consciousness. And so, accepting it all as God, as good, we say yes to life, yes to this moment, yes to each other. It is good, it is God, and there is more good for each one of us than ever. It's done, it's complete. I know for anyone that has any kind of illness whatsoever, that there's a healing going on, that that healing comes from the inside out and returns every cell, every system, every function, every fiber of each person's human body to physical wholeness and well-being. Thank you, thank you, thank you, life, God, law, for always being that presence, for always being there. Thank you for saying yes. It's done, it's complete, and please help me release it by saying with me. And so it is. And now the Jewel Tones Choir. Thank you, Heather. That was a wonderful talk and prayer. So our next song, as our jewel tones are gathering, is a beautiful piece called For Where Love Is, There Is God. And we have uh, four singers that are going to be featured in the middle of this song. That's Rita and Jamie and Jimmy and Wade. Oh. 
here because they have a song that we're going to do for offertory. It is now time for us to uh, share our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. And how we do this is we say our prosperity affirmation together. And then we take a few seconds of silence just to feel grateful for all the good that already is in our lives. And then, um, then uh, normally the stewards would come forward. And while we're singing, I send my love, and then the choir is going to send any choir members that want to give their gifts. After service, there are a couple of offering baskets on the table with the blue tablecloth. I invite you to do that. And for the people online, by all means, go to our website, and there is a donate, uh, volunteer and donate button. Don donate there, we'd be so grateful. This entire center, is fully supported by the people who attend it. So knowing that the invisible presence is sufficient to everything, I give great thanks for all of us. And so uh, our prosperity affirmation, my offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply, and it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Two soloists, Jamie and Reed, are going to be the soloists on that. And hopefully, in our camera, you can still see Ken over there, who's going to be signing the song as well. So, you'll get a multimedia experience of this beautiful chant like song.
ahead and leave the stage <laughs> while we get ready for the next portion of our service. Thank you so much for your time and talent, choir. As a very big thank you to our choir and to um, the soloists in the choir, and of course our musicians, our wonderful Diane, who is such a talented. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the time of the service that I'd say if if you're in service today, please stand. Well, all of you who are here is this, so please stand. So and so. I'm incredibly thankful for each one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as I said in my message, there won't be practitioners available right now after service, but there, if anyone is wanting a prayer, just stop me and I can direct you to someone um, that you can call or have a six-foot space between you uh, for a prayer today. And... Um, well, the practitioners who are here today, would you just stand so people can see who you are? So Rick is practitioner as well. Okay. And Pam and Marlene. Okay, thanks. And... We'll skip newcomers. Yeah, definitely. No, well, there are a couple of newcomers here, but we're... So just see me afterwards. We acknowledge you. We're so grateful for you coming. And... Um, and Hopefully, there was something of value for you, even though it wasn't a full, a full service here. Well, it was a full service, but not full of people. But we do have announcements. So, everything's canceled. No. <laughs> Rick. The announcements have been postponed. <laughs> but only for five seconds. Want to discuss today's topic in a small group environment? If so, don't stay here. <laughs> Because there is no conscious connection today. And it normally meets right here at noon in the sanctuary and will continue at a future date. Wednesday's wisdom. Want some wisdom? Don't come here on Wednesday. <laughs> but it will return soon. And also, there will be no sound bath next week because we can't be sure the bathtub is clean. Our annual general meeting is also postponed, but you can send in your proxy vote, so uh, do that and be involved. Strawberry Fields Forever. That's our teen uh, camp thing that's coming up. They're not here today to donate to, but you can donate online, so, you know, fork it over. <laughs> now, we have an outreach program called Science at the Center, which normally meets on the fourth Monday of the month. It is postponed, <laughs> but you can talk to Lee Van Slyke, he's here, if you want to find out about it. Classes? We have classes. They're postponed. <laughs> Only for a couple of weeks, and uh, contact your instructor for further enlightenment. Shifting sands. It's shifted, it's not happening this time, <laughs> but it will continue at a future date. Today's flowers. They were not canceled. They, they know no, no virus or any of that stuff. They just know how to be beautiful. And they are from Reverend Judy Chapman for Dan Martin, who lovingly donates his time to clean our center's carpets and chairs so we can have a clean place to commune with God. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Reverend Judy. And now, there are no children, so... <laughs> service call stand <laughs>
through this together as one. And so it is. Yes. Yes. Yes.